all of my Pan-Africanists out there, when you come to FDMG, if you spot one of those African-American tribalist groups, members out there, anybody who say they're not from Africa, you're not allowed at my school. We don't teach that. I want to say it again. I want to make sure y'all understand me. So nobody's, nobody's angry when you get escorted off the campus. If you are not from Africa, you do not belong at my school for any reason. It is a pan-African nationalist institution. If you do not ascribe to the teachings of pan-Africanism, of African solidarity, of race first, of African family first, if you are not unapologetically African, you are not allowed at my school. I want to be clear with you. I want to be clear. And I'm counting on my pan-Africanists out there that if you catch any of them, I'm not from Africa people at any event, you catch any of those I'm not from Africa people at any event, please show me who they are so I can kindly throw their asses off Ifa Tunde Avenue. Please show me who they are so they can kindly be escorted off of Dr. Papa Boulevard. I am an African. I was born it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to die it. That is my flag. It is red. It is black. It is green. It was given to me in August of 1920 from Marcus Garvey and the Pan-Africanists who attended the first international convention of the African peoples of the world in Madison Square Garden, New York City. That is the only flag that will ever fly at FDMG. If you got any other flag, if you got any other loyalty, you are not welcomed at our institution. I speak for me, I speak for my donors, I speak for my supporters, I speak for the African family of the world. Take your divisionist, tribalist, separatist, self-hating ass somewhere else. Don't bring it to Delaware. Don't bring it to Delaware. So now, let me get back focused. Let me get back focused. I had an ADHD moment. So W.E.B. Du Bois worked to destroy Garvey because he was jealous. W.E.B. Du Bois worked to destroy Garvey because he was jealous. Okay? We don't have to debate that, sister. You, you've made your choice. I wish you well with your movement and your leader. He's not going to build anything for you. He's not going to do anything for you, but you're too dumb to know that. So just go ahead and just leave us alone. We're not the Pan-Africanists don't bother nobody, brothers and sisters. We do our own thing. The Pan-Africanists don't bother nobody. We just do our own thing. So let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So on Marcus Garvey's birthday, 1918, Marcus Garvey's birthday, 1918. So he's now 9707. So he's 30. Marcus Garvey's 31st birthday, The Negro World is published. The first copies of The Negro World are pushed under people's doors. The first copies of The Negro World is pushed under people's doors. Okay? So people could get familiar with The Negro World. And then the Negro world was such in demand. Remember, there was no TV yet. The, no internet, no Facebook, no Twitter, no MySpace, no websites, no nothing. So the newspaper was the main organ of communication. The Negro world became the most popular black newspaper in modern history. They had to translate the Negro world into Spanish, French, I believe the Negro world ended up being translated into like six to 12 different languages and it was shipped all around the world, but it was banned in Africa. Most European colonists, colonizers banned the Garvey newspaper. If you got caught with the paper, you could go to jail, you could be killed, you could lose your job. Okay. So they had to smuggle the newspaper into Africa. They had to smuggle the Negro World Garvey paper into Africa. So a lot of the men who were in the military, they would take the newspaper under their clothes. They would put it under their clothes. 
And when they go to Africa, they would give the newspapers to the children and the children would run into the villages and the griots in the villages and the chiefs and the nanas and the babas, they would read Marcus Garvey editorial to the entire village. And that's how Garveyism spread throughout Africa along with the divisions in Africa. And you should also know that South Africa, South Africa was the most thoroughly organized Marcus Garvey country in Africa. South Africa was the most thoroughly organized Marcus Garvey nation in Africa. Okay. But you had chapters of the Garvey movement in just about every country in Africa, including the Congo, including the Congo, which is the richest piece of land in the world upon which the Black Panther story was written. Rest in peace to Chadwick Boseman. Patrice Lumumba was a Garveyite. All of the African independence leaders were Garveyite. See, Garvey dies in 1940. Garvey dies in England in 1940. 17 years later, Ghana is free. Kwame Nkrumah took the Garvey he studied in America, took it back and birthed African independence from the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey, which he said was the most important book, most influential book he ever read in his life. <laughs> Somebody said, why did Garvey end up in Europe? Silly question, but you know that Jamaica was a colony of Europe. So if you were in a Jamaican colony, you had a much easier transit to Europe because you were considered one of the subjects of the, of the crown of Europe, right? And Europe is right over Africa. Geographically, it's extremely close to Africa. So a lot of Pan-Africanists would go to Europe because it, 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 it shrunk the gap of communication between them and the African continent. That's why so many Pan-Africanists ended up going to Europe as a strategic way to get close to Africa. Even until recently, when you fly to Africa, most of the time you had to fly into Europe first and then fly into Africa. Even now, when I go to Africa, a lot of times we have to stop in Europe or North Africa and then come down into Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, so. The Negro World is published on Garvey's birthday, 1918. 1919, Marcus Garvey incorporates the Black Star Line. 1919, Marcus Garvey incorporates the Black Star Line. 1919, Marcus Garvey incorporates the Black Star Line. Now, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. The Black Star Line was incorporated in Delaware... In 1919, the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy was incorporated in Delaware 2019. The Marcus Garvey Black Star Line was incorporated in Delaware 1919. The Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy was incorporated in Delaware 2019. There are no coincidences. I am the reincarnation. I am the reincarnation of Marcus Garvey, of Frederick Douglass, of Nat Turner, and so many more. So anyway, when Garvey launches the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation in 1919, this infuriates black leadership. Because no other black leader in America was doing anything close to what Garvey was doing when he decided to launch the Black Star Line Steamship Corporations. Sounds familiar, don't it? As you hear the story of Garvey, some of you are thinking about my story, aren't you? As you hear this Black Star Line story, you're thinking about the Dr. Umar story. Because just like Garvey, 
None of my contemporaries in the so-called black consciousness movement is doing anything close to what I'm doing with the building of the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. They're doing the same thing W.E.B. Du Bois is doing. Hating. Hating on, they hated on Garvey because he was stronger than them. They hated on Garvey because he was more charismatic than them. They hated on Garvey because he was a better organizer than them. They hated on Garvey because he was more sincere than them. And I want to say this to you. And once again, to my light-skinned Africans, I have no problem with you. I might marry a light-skinned woman. I don't care what color you are. I care about how you think. But I want to be clear about this. Marcus Garvey violated an unwritten rule in black America. Marcus Garvey violated an unwritten rule in black America. And the unwritten rule that His Excellency, the most honorable Marcus Garvey, violated was being a dark-skinned African who had a nerve to be proud of it. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Marcus Garvey violated an unwritten rule in black American leadership. Marcus Garvey violated an unwritten rule in black American leadership. And that unwritten rule is real simple. Leadership is not to be black skinned. Leaders are not to be dark. And they are not to be proud of their darkness. Marcus Garvey had a nerve to not only be dark skinned, richly melanated. He had a nerve to be proud of his black skin. Do y'all follow me, brothers and sisters? Do y'all follow me, brothers and sisters? Do y'all follow me, brothers and sisters? Garvey had a nerve to not only be chocolate, he was proud of it. Garvey had a nerve to not only be nappy, he not only was nappy, brothers and sisters, he not only was nappy, he had a nerve. The most honorable Marcus Garvey had a nerve to be proud, to be nappy and black. He pissed off W.E.B. Du Bois. He pissed off A. Philip Randolph. He pissed off the NAACP. He pissed off the Urban League. He pissed off the black fraternities and sororities. He pissed off the boule. Garvey pissed off the entire black intelligentsia. Garvey pissed off the entire black intelligentsia when he said, say it loud. I am black and I'm proud. James Brown may have wrote the song. James Brown may have wrote the song, but it was Marcus Garvey who created the Black and Proud movement. James Brown may have wrote the song, but it was Marcus Garvey who created the Black and Proud movement, brothers and sisters. Happy to be nappy. And that's why in the Garvey movement, did you know? Now, mind you, this is 1920. Garvey is at his height in the 20s, we only 50 years out of slavery. The black man in America is only 50 years out of slavery when Garvey is here. You are only 50 years out of slavery when Garvey shows up. And Garvey said, get rid of your wishbone and put a backbone. Garvey said, whatever we need, we can build it ourselves. Garvey said, you will never be free as long as you depend on the white man for what you need for the black man. Garvey said, up you mighty race, you can accomplish what you will, brothers and sisters. We have never had a leader since who did what Garvey did. And Marcus Garvey is the only leader Post Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Marcus Garvey is the only mass leader since Douglass in Washington who did not play up black people's religious handicap in order 
to keep their attention. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Every leader after Garvey threw a religion in your face and took you away from Africa. Every one of them. Although they copied Garvey, stole from Garvey, plagiarized Garvey, used Garvey Hose program. Every one of them threw a religion in your face and took you away from Africa. Every one of them. Garvey didn't give you no Bible. Garvey didn't give you no Quran. Garvey didn't give you no Torah. Garvey gave you African independence, African pride, African government, African self-determination. That's what Garvey gave you, not no damn religion. The Garvey movement was built as a government. The Garvey movement was built as a government. Not no damn church. Garvey built a government for African people. A government. Not no church. A government. With all due respect, you are incorrect. That person you're naming does not have a school. In the state he lives in, independent schools have to be licensed. In the state he lives in, you got to have credentials to operate an independent school. In the state he lives in, independent schools are listed on the website. His school is not listed on the website, nor has it ever received a license to operate as an independent school. But y'all know more than me, so I'm not going to get into that. Y'all know more than me, so I'm not going to get into that. Y'all know more than me, so I'm not going to get into that. See, there's schools, there's clubs, there's tutoring programs, there's academic centers. But in the state he lives in, you have to be licensed to operate an independent school. He has no such license. Let me get back to the lesson. Let me get back. Let's talk about the Black Star Line. Why did Garvey launch the Black Star Line? Why did Garvey launch the Black Star Line? You out of your mind if you think you need a religion to organize. Black people don't need a religion. Black people don't need a religion. If you're using religion to organize black folks, you are outdated and you're useless. Okay? Okay? We don't suffer because of no Christianity, no Islam. Or no Judaism or nothing else. Okay? The reason Marcus Garvey was the most successful black leader in modern history is he was the only one. The reason Marcus Garvey was the most successful black leader in modern history is because he was the only one. The reason Marcus Garvey was the most successful black leader in history is because he was the only one who understood that religion will cause more problems than it solves. They tried to get Marcus Garvey to make the UNIA a church. They tried to get Marcus Garvey to make the UNIA a mosque. They tried to get Marcus Garvey to make the UNIA a temple. Marcus Garvey said, no, if you want to go worship Jesus, go to church. You want to go pray the way Muhammad taught you? Go to the mosque. But Garvey said, in this organization, we exist for one purpose and one purpose only to create an independent reality for African people wherever they live in the world. You will not reduce my organization into a religious movement. Garvey was too big to be reduced to a religion. Garvey was more successful than all the others because he had the wisdom to know that you don't put a religion on a racial movement. Culture, not religion. The Garvey movement was about African culture, not religion. African culture, not religion. How many people did Garvey have? 13 million documented members. 13 million documented members. 13 million documented members were a part of the Garvey movement in his lifetime. Do you know what that means? 
We want to get the black star line in a minute. We want to get the black star line in a minute. 13 million members making the Garvey movement the largest black organization in modern history without a religion. Do you know what that means? You can add up every black group in America right now. You can add up every major black group in America right now, every member they've ever had since they've been founded, and you still don't get the 13 million that Garvey had. You have the internet. Garvey didn't have the internet. You have the airplane. Garvey didn't have the airplane. You have Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook. Garvey had none of that. And he organized more Africans in the world than all you other Garvey copycat organizations put together. I'm just spitting facts. I'm just spitting facts. I'm just spitting facts. I'm just spitting facts. So October the 14th of 1919, a coon by the name of George Tyler goes into what I believe was the Black Star Line office in New York City, pulls out a gun and starts shooting at Marcus Garvey. This is the first assassination attempt on the life of the most honorable Marcus Garvey. When the shots start bussing, Marcus Garvey's wife, Queen Mother Amy Garvey, jumps in front of Garvey, and I believe she tumbles down the steps with the would-be killer, and the would-be killer gets up, runs off. He is later accosted, arrested, and while awaiting prison, he commits suicide while awaiting prison. This was October the 14th of 1919. We believe that either the FBI or some of Mr. Garvey's jealous Negro competitors paid George Tyler to go kill Marcus Garvey. And when he did not succeed and got arrested, they had him murdered in jail so that it could not come out as to who really hired him to assassinate the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. On New Year's, excuse me, on Christmas Day of the same year, 1919, on Christmas Day of 1919, Christmas Day of 1919, the honorable Marcus Garvey marries Queen Mother Amy Garvey. February of that year, W.E.B. Du Bois holds his Pan-African conferences. Okay. Pan-African conferences. Du Bois was holding his conferences in Europe for a integrationist, Pan-Africanist contingency. Okay, let me. Garvey was holding massive black conferences in New York for grassroots Africans from around the world. W.E.B. Du Bois is holding Pan African Congresses in Europe with the black intelligentsia and the white intelligentsia. So Garvey laughed at W.E.B. Du Bois. Marcus Garvey laughed at W.E.B. Du Bois, okay? He laughed at him and said, you in Europe with a handful of coons and Caucasians thinking you doing something for Africa. See, W.E.B. Du Bois was cursed with something that a lot of black scholars are cursed with. Dr. King is an exception. 
I am an exception. And a few others with PhDs, real doctorate degrees, not the ones they give out in the conscious community, but the ones you earn. There's a few exceptions to this. But for most of black history, for most of black history, scholars have not been able to relate to the grassroots brothers and sisters on the ground, and they have not made great organizers because intellectually they see themselves as better than, do you understand? And socially, they no longer come from the grassroots. See, W.E.B. Du Bois couldn't organize black people the way Garvey did because W.E.B. Du Bois was a bougie, light-skinned supremacist. His color wasn't the problem, brothers and sisters, but the fact that he thought he was better because of his color. Let me say that again. His color wasn't the problem, but the fact that he thought he was better because he was so light, that was a, he couldn't relate. He couldn't relate. Dr. King is an exception. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad, and we'll be celebrating Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad's birthday in Brooklyn, Tuesday, January the 12th, I believe it is. For those of y'all who want to come, it's going to be a special two-hour program in Brooklyn. Tuesday, January the 12th, from 4 p.m. until 6, we will be at the Magnolia Tree in Brooklyn. The Magnolia Tree in Brooklyn, 677 Lafayette Avenue. 677 Lafayette Avenue in Brooklyn, January the 12th, 2021, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad birthday. We will be celebrating him. Dr. Khalid and Marcus Garvey had a lot in common. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad and Marcus Garvey had a lot in common. I'm going to give you three things they had. Both of them were unapologetically African. Both of them. Both of them were black-skinned, dark-skinned black men who were proud to be black. Both of them. Dr. Khalid was proud of his blackness. The Honorable Marcus Garvey was proud of the blackness. And both of them left us around the age of 53. Marcus Garvey left us at the age of 53. Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad left us around the age of 53. Stop asking me to debate your leader. I called him out a couple years ago for a debate. He don't want that smoke. He don't want that smoke. I will gladly debate him anywhere, any day, any time. But y'all going to raise some money for the school. Okay. He can get these intellectual hands. That is no problem. I will destroy him intellectually. I will destroy him. He is not a scholar. He is not well-read. He is not well-trained. He is a hustler. I will destroy your leader on any stage, in any city, any day, any night. But I'm going to charge y'all. The Ain't From Africa tribe. Y'all going to have to donate $20,000 to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. And I will gladly debate your leader. I will come to his town and debate him. I'll debate him in his house. I'll debate him on his front yard. I will intellectually assassinate that man. But y'all want to pay the school $20,000 for the benefit of my time. Peace and black power. Let's get back. Let's get back. Okay. So Garvey and Khalid both broke the rule. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey and Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad both broke the rule of being chocolate, dark-skinned black leaders who were proud to be black. Proud, proud to be black. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. And I'm not trying to play up the light skin, dark skin thing. Because we all one family. I'm not playing that up. I love my light skin Africans. I love my dark skin Africans. I ain't got no issues with nobody. I love a yellow sister like I love a chocolate sister. Don't make a difference to me. But I do want to say this. I have noticed that most of the so-called scholars that I have had issues with most of the so-called scholars, just like Garvey, just like Garvey, just like Garvey, most of the so-called scholars that have had issues with me, real scholars and fake YouTube scholars, 
most of, let me get this Instagram back on. Most of the scholars that Dr. Umar has had issues with, fake, the fake YouTube scholars or the real traditional scholars,